Faison. So I'm here to talk to you about how to create your own opportunities and this will ultimately help you stand out in the marketing world. I have definitely done this myself and um, being creating opportunities which this is all about so as you said a little bit about me I am from Liverpool if you can't already tell and um, I studied psychology at university in Birmingham and I now own and run Girls in Marketing so we're an online platform for women in the marketing industry although we're not just for women we're for everyone and um, obviously girls in marketing it's kind of in the name but we do not discriminate against anyone everyone uses what we do and we're very happy about that the name just kind of came about all to do with kind of women empowerment and just kind of getting people to feel confident women especially are those who are kind of not necessarily always within the higher roles in marketing. So females are very much dominate the marketing industry, but they don't dominate higher up roles. So there's always kind of this ceiling for almost kind of like not being able to progress in your career, which I seen as a big issue. And when I worked with clients from literally across the world, when I started freelancing, I seen a huge issue with clients thinking that I wasn't good enough because I was a woman and also kind of saying because of my age as well. So I've kind of set up Girls in Marketing for that reason. I live for oat milk lattes and I love traveling as well. And also I didn't put this on here, but I love French cheese and I'm getting one officially with my partner on Saturday. We're picking her up on Saturday. So I'm super excited to get a French cheese because I love dogs. Anyway. So yeah, Girls in Marketing was set up in August of September last year. We're based in the UK, but we are tailored to marketers across the world. And we aim to bring about a sense of community by support by providing support and advice for marketers um, within the industry and those who wanna get into the industry as well. So we have lots of different things that you can make use of. We have a website, a podcast, a jobs board. We have multiple Facebook groups, a LinkedIn group, and lots of other social medias as well. And we host regular events and workshops and also offer courses and guides as well to help you get started in marketing. It We are essentially a new way to learn and grow in your marketing career. And we are tailored to everyone and every anyone and everyone who loves marketing, which I'm sure you guys do because you're here today. So in terms of my journey so far, I started a YouTube channel in 2011, which not gonna lie, kind of regretted, but it did teach me a lot about myself and also about filming, photography and editing. So I was very much into a lot of creative stuff from a very young age. Starting a YouTube channel possibly wasn't the best idea that I had, but it gave me a lot of confidence going forward and, and kind of being creative and, making kind of things come to life so having ideas and making them come to life that was great after the youtube channel didn't really start well i decided to start up a blog in 2014 because i've always been more of a writer than an entertainer and i think with youtube it didn't really work out because i had to sit in front of a camera and chat about absolute shit like i i wasn't chatting what i wanted to talk about so definitely starting a blog I was a lot more literate I could talk about the things I wanted to and also edit them as well I think YouTube just didn't really work out because it was just kind of the thing that everyone was doing back then um and then yeah so I wrote on my blog for a while and I also wrote for other online magazines up until I went to university so on the right you can see my first blog and it's genuinely awful like i wouldn't <laughs> make this anymore i don't know if anyone has the same thoughts but my partner is a web developer and he like literally gags at the thought of this blog like he thinks it's disgusting um but i love doing it and i love writing and obviously you can see here one of the posts was about feminism i always wrote about really things that really resonated with me so really good like opinions and out something that I was really really passionate about and I have been passionate about feminism and education and stuff from a really young age and that really did show through my blog as well I absolutely loved university but during my first year I started looking more into marketing so obviously I did psychology I love doing psychology and I still love it now however 
it wasn't really something that I could see myself going into after university. Um, the lack of job prospects was a big one. Um, but also the fact that I just couldn't see myself going any further. The only thing that I thought I could do was possibly teaching. But even that I wasn't really a big fan of because I don't like kids. So I was just kind of in a bit of a sticky situation. And I'm pretty sure some of you will be going through this right now, thinking about what you want to do after university. And, and it is really, really difficult. Um, and I had the realization within first year of having a look into marketing. Now, I then decided to go on and complete so many different free online courses. So I have put a list on the Girls in Marketing website of loads of these free courses. We're always adding to them because people are always suggesting new ones. And also I'm still doing more as well. As a marketer, you are always constantly evolving, constantly learning. This is something you'll either know or you'll come to learn that you will never know everything you should about marketing. And it is very much an ever-changing industry, which makes it super fun, kind of tire tiring, kind of stressful, but you shouldn't get yourself stressed about it because if you love it and you're passionate about it, then you will definitely go far within the industry. So I started to do so many different courses and I absolutely loved it. I then started freelancing through a website called Upwork, which is a freelance website. And I did stuff as content and SEO. So didn't really know much about SEO at the time. I knew a lot more about content because I've been writing my blog and I've been doing a lot of other stuff in terms of like online magazines and stuff like that. So I had a really basic understanding of content and SEO. Um, so I just started doing some, some freelance work. It was really cheap and um, I wouldn't do it now. And when I, at the beginning, I was practically earning like two to three pound per article, which I mean, it's better than unpaid work, I'll admit, but it's also not the best. However, I learned so much through freelancing when I started and throughout the few years that I was doing it um, at university and then after university as well about working with clients, talking to clients, understanding needs, creating strategies, literally everything. And I actually don't blame those people for not paying me very much because when I look back at the stuff I produced when I first started, it wasn't awful, but it wasn't great. Like I wouldn't produce it now. Um, so I think I kind of didn't necessarily deserve to be paid a, a huge amount because of the work that I was producing. But needless to say, I'm a lot better now. Um, so then I moved off of Upwork because the money is very limiting. People do have a kind of overarching kind of enemy with Upwork and, and freelance sites. Um, if you are interested in freelancing, it's a great way to get started. But clients who are on there often have a really, really small budget. So if you are a full time freelancer, you'll probably want to stay off those sites, but they're great to get started. And so when I kind of built up a more of a portfolio of work, I moved off that and I just started offering freelance services by other means. So we actually have a course on girls in marketing which is talk talks about how to kind of get into freelance work. We've had amazing feedback from it. I've had people who've literally gone from, you know, kind of leaving university and not knowing what they want to do to completing the course. And I spoke to a, a girl the other day and she was on like a 50th client, which is amazing. So that course at the moment is $29.99. Um, but I'm happy to kind of give any of you, your members a discount if that's something that you're interested in. Um, I understand obviously money's tough and all that, but it is a really great course to get started. I wish I could kind of sit here and tell you everything about it, but the course literally took me months to write. So I don't think I can go through that amount of content in you know such a short amount of time, but that is kind of what happened to me and how I decided to kind of go with that. So then after I'd freelanced in university, I bagged a job just before I graduated in a marketing department for an investment company in Liverpool. So obviously I'd been in Birmingham and I decided to kind of move, uh, I moved back to Liverpool. I didn't want to stay in Birmingham. Um, I wasn't the biggest fan of living there. And also I wanted to move back home anyway. I loved the university that I went to, but it just wasn't something that I could see myself doing. Plus uh, my partner at the time was living in Liverpool as well. So I wanted to kind of move back, which was great. 
Um, so after I worked full time and I was also freelancing at the same time as working full time, I decided after a while to leave my job in June of 2020 this year. And now I run Girls in Marketing full time and also have some freelance clients that I do SEO for. So I'm a lot better at SEO now, um, which has been a long time coming, definitely. And it's very hard to learn, but it's great when you kind of start seeing results. So I mainly decided to leave my job because I wasn't really happy within the kind of company and within the position. I felt really limited to how I was progressing within my career. And also I had a lot of freelance clients who I'd worked with previously that wanted to work with me again. And I just couldn't resist it really. So there you go. So the truth is I've been creating my own opportunities my whole life without even realizing it. And it's possible that you are in the same position as well. Now, if you're not, then that's fine, which is what this kind of whole talk is about, why and how you can be creating your own opportunity. So why should you create your own opportunity? Well, in all honesty, it's a lot easier than looking for work experience and internships. And also you're doing something that you love at the same time. I know how difficult it can be to work, to look for work experience and you are expected to work, you know, sometimes unpaid for like a lot of time. And it's not ideal because although it's good for employers to see that you've got the work experience, it's not ideal when you're studying to be doing that at the same time. But creating opportunities looks impressive to employers because it shows that you're proactive and you're enthusiastic about the role. When I was going for interviews, when, just before I graduated, everyone was saying to me, you know, it's amazing how, you know, you've been doing all this stuff and you've got all this big portfolio and you haven't even finished university yet, which was great. And I just think when you kind of look at the nitty gritty of things it is great to have a degree and it's great to do everything that you do but being in university is a perfect time to build up experience but not necessarily in a traditional way of the internships because they don't always work for everyone now when you create your own opportunity as well you're improving the skills now i literally cringe when i look back at my old blogs from 2015 2016 because I've come a long way since then. Not only have I improved grammatically, not only have I improved my actual knowledge, but I've, I've become a lot more confident. And when I was attending interviews, when I first started, uh, when I was kind of first graduated, I felt a lot more confident because I thought I've got a portfolio of work, I know what I'm doing. And kind of going forward, I was like, uh, you know, I'm quite good at what I do. And I think one of the biggest things when I started working full time and I got got the position working in house in a marketing team, they were really impressed with the knowledge that I had because not only did I know how things worked, but I could do things within a good time limit because I'd learned to keep to deadlines for clients as well. Now, creating your own opportunity is a great way as well to build your personal brand, which is another key aspect for so many employers especially larger companies. If you have a really good personal brand, this is particularly online right now because of obviously COVID, but in general as well, especially the marketing industry, if you have a really good personal brand, people are much more likely to want to employ you. Now, I'm not saying you've got to go out and be like an influencer on LinkedIn. That's not the thing. You can if you want, don't get me wrong, but employers just want to see that you are, you, you enjoy what you do and you're passionate about what you do as well. It's not always easy to build a personal brand, but you've got to start somewhere. And it's definitely great to kind of build that, even if you're not doing anything else. You know, I think the reality of things is that opportunity won't just appear. You've got to work for them and you've got to put the effort in. And, you know, when you kind of come to graduation and you come to thinking about jobs, you need to start thinking about how you can be proactive, not just in university, but in your career as well, because you will never ever stop learning. So 
how can you create your own opportunity well there's so so many different ways and i'm pretty sure you'll probably know a few but i thought i'd add these in because these are some that you might not necessarily think about but they're great ways to keep your own opportunities going even if you're not necessarily freelancing or starting a blog so you can i would honestly say get involved in anything you can you know without burning yourself out i totally understand that that is you know a big thing get involved with as much as you can put yourself out there always ask people you know if you if you want to do things go out and do them you know the only thing that can happen is people can say no which obviously isn't the best answer but when it comes back to it you are won't have lost anything now another thing is you can volunteer for local charities and organizations to help them out especially when it comes to social media because at the moment a lot of local charities and organizations are looking for people to help with the social media so i know the trussell trust um which are a food bank um are looking particularly across the uk for people to help out with their social media right now um and even if it is just kind of applying to them and they are obviously a really great charity putting yourself out there donating a few of your hours every week to their charity that's amazing fcancer.org as well is another great website to go to they display kind of digital opportunities so web development and marketing and stuff for cancer charities so again they're another great company to volunteer for i think you always want to kind of put your time if something's on page you want to put your time into something that's valuable so charities and kind of non-profit organizations are really great for that so they're just kind of two websites two companies that look for a lot of kind of social media work and marketing and because it is unpaid they don't expect you to have a lot of experience which is great because you can obviously start and then kind of almost kind of wing your way through it really I mean I don't think they'd have an issue with that obviously you have to have some knowledge of, of marketing but um it's a great way to kind of get involved with things and I'd also say join societies so obviously you're, all of you are involved in at least one if you're here um, and ask if you know you can do their marketing I understand this is obviously the marketing society so I'm pretty sure you have people for marketing but there are lots of societies at university that have that don't necessarily have like a marketing team or anyone to do their marketing so even if you join or you're already in a society ask to do people's marketing or their social media especially if they don't already have one because they'll definitely be up for it having an online presence is so important right now and i think you know societies understand this and they, they want to get involved with it you can set up a blog or a website where you can create your own content so this can be about anything you're passionate about you could maybe even set up an instagram account alongside it i know a lot of bloggers do have you know instagram accounts alongside the blog it's not for everyone but if you are a good writer and you want to improve your skills in terms of writing then it's a great place to start so wordpress wix squarespace they're all free websites that you can use to set up a blog if that's something that you're interested in and um, I, I would also say to make sure you set it up about something you're passionate about because you know if you are producing content that you feel resonates with what you love then you're not going to feel like it's much effort to produce that content especially if you are looking at kind of going down a certain route and you want maybe you want to go into fashion marketing for example start a fashion blog like it's just kind of whatever you feel will fit your future career try and kind of mold your blog in that way so i know a lot of people are interested especially at the moment in sustainable marketing so working for brands and businesses that are in the sustainability industry that are really sustainable which is great so start a blog on sustainability if you feel that you are passionate about a certain thing and you want to get into that kind of industry in marketing setting up a blog is a great way to start and it you know a lot of the time it's free as well if you did just want to self-host a blog which i did for kind of the latter half of my blog and um, when it looks a lot better it's not that expensive i understand as a student you don't have a lot of money so you might not want to fork out for it but i think the domain's normally about 10 to 15 pounds and then the self-hosting is about five pounds a month and to to make sure it looks good it's worth it but other than that you can just set up a free one as well 
Now, another thing I'd suggest is to build up your network on LinkedIn. So start by working on your personal branding and eventually more employers will notice you and they'll start kind of coming to you for the right reasons. So posting on LinkedIn and creating articles, you can do literally everything. So you don't necessarily have to start up a blog. You can just start posting on LinkedIn. You can post longer posts, so the article style kind of blogs or shorter ones as well and just kind of connect to people that you are interested in if they're in a certain industry that you love or if they're in a certain kind of industry that you like in terms of marketing related so if they're like working influencer marketing or if they work in seo then connect with them it's a great way to build your network and also when it comes to graduation or when it comes to looking for jobs you have you'll then have a network that you can put out to whether you can message them or just have a post as well and um, i know that when i kind of first started doing freelance stuff away from upwork i messaged a load of people who were like agency owners especially in Birmingham and Liverpool and just ask them I'm like hey I was just wondering if you are looking for anyone to help you out with some freelance work and you know a lot of them came back and said yes and that's I still work with some of those people now from years ago so it's definitely about putting yourself out there on LinkedIn if you've got a solid base for your personal branding then people are going to want to work with you as well so another way you can do is to write for small or larger online publications and magazines so smaller online magazines it's a lot easier to write for these so these are people who are probably just people who set up like their own magazines and stuff like that which i mean is great but it's not necessarily something that's going to get you kind of put out there but if you do it's a lot easier to write for these smaller magazines however you can do that or you can pitch articles to larger magazines so Think about something that's newsworthy, brainstorm a really good idea, and you can reach out to publications and larger magazines because so, so many take on um, articles from like guest writers. So I've included a few on here. So save the student.org, especially because you're all students, they'd be really up for hearing about your experiences at university maybe you know just certain things literally anything as long as it's not already on their website they will probably want it on their website so they'll be up for hearing about anything and then entrepreneur.com as well the tab is another good student one and studentlife.org.uk is another great one there is so so many out there you can literally just type in um, you know, magazines for pitching and it will come up if you put students, fashion magazines for pitching, student magazines for pitching, loads will come up. It's so, so, it's not necessarily easy to do it, but it's so easy to start the outreach process. And in that itself, you're almost kind of getting PR experience because you will be chatting to people and understanding the way that works. And essentially, if you get a really good placement on one of these websites, then that's something you can put on your portfolio. If you can get something where you're a regular contributor, so entrepreneur, they have regular contributors. And if you can get on there and you can, you know, produce an article for them every month or every week, then that that's great. Like it's really building up your portfolio in every way possible. Um, so also, if you don't want to do the more kind of practical side of things, you can start doing some online courses. So like I said, we have the list on Girls in Marketing where it has all of lots of free online courses. So especially the Google Digital Fundamentals course. I don't know if you'll have heard this of this one, but it's a 40 hour course that kind of finishes with a certification from Google. And it's really great. Lots of people are doing it at the moment. It gives you an all round basic knowledge of digital marketing, which is really good, especially if you're looking at the kind of digital marketing world. And then another kind of thing that you could do is email local digital marketing agencies to ask if they have any room for someone to help them and get experience. So this is what I done, but this was for freelancing, but you can do this in, in kind of any capacity at all. So all you need to Google is digital marketing agencies, Bournemouth, for example, and then reach out to those people. They'll have a contact page. Sometimes they'll even have a jobs page. This is something that you can do looking for jobs as well, because a lot of the time digital marketing agencies do not 
kind of put out the jobs on jobs boards so typical like indeed and reads where you would normally go for a job the, the agencies won't really put their information out there on them sometimes they do but a lot of the times they just kind of leave it um, but if you type this in, a load will come up. I, you know, did it with Birmingham and with Liverpool when I was looking for freelance work. And I just had like a template email that I just said, hi, you know, I'm a student in university. I'm currently doing freelance work. I'm just looking to see if, you know, you need any help with that. And I mean, you can do whatever you want as long as you've got a good template in place. You can really kind of reach out to anyone you want. And guarantees if you reach out to, I would say, 10 to 20 agencies in your local area someone will get back to you and say yeah like you know you can do some experience especially at the moment because agencies are doing really well right now which sounds a bit strange because of the current situation but agencies for some really strange reason are just doing really well so they probably would need someone to come in to do to get experience and to kind of do freelance work whatever you know suits you and then also another thing is if you work in a pub, a restaurant or a shop, so especially the independent type ones, obviously this current kind of COVID situation, this was written before, before we lockdown thing came into place. But um, if you do work at a small pub or a restaurant or shop, ask to run the social media. I've said this to so many people because it's not something that you initially think about, but it really does work. So, so many people in our community and our network have worked in like a small pub or a restaurant and they've just gone to their boss and said, I'd love to run the social media. I'm a marketing student or I'm interested in marketing. And they've turned around and said, yeah, go on, you can do it. Like, you know, if and obviously you would be doing it for free and it would be unpaid. Alternatively, they might agree to pay you because I know a lot of people especially one of the contributors that helps us with girls and marketing. She was working as a receptionist in a hotel, an independent hotel. And now she works as the marketing and PR manager because over the last few years, she's just gone from kind of a receptionist to doing the social media, to then doing like the PR stuff, to now like leading a team of people, which is absolutely crazy. And you might not always think it. And being in a kind of more retail customer service focused job you might think there's no opportunities for me to be in marketing but there actually is so then when you've got all these opportunities and experiences how do you then showcase this to employers it is difficult i'll admit and i think especially at the moment because everyone's trying something new it's difficult to really kind of put these things down into your CV and how do you then show employers whether you're going for a job or whether it's part-time or full-time, how do you actually show them that you know what you're talking about? Well, you wanna combine a few of these opportunities that I've talked about previously and do a few of them so that you've got lots of examples to talk about on your cover letter. So maybe you do some volunteering for a local charity, but you also pitch to online magazines as well maybe you're working with a small pub on their social media but you're doing something else just little tiny bits of everything not necessarily everything but a few different things would work really really well because you want to make sure that you're you're building a portfolio that isn't necessarily you know the strongest portfolio but it's definitely something that you can leave university with and feel really confident about i understand not everyone's going to be able to get part-time marketing work it's really rare but what happens is if you create these opportunities and then you can showcase them properly you're ultimately going to be a better candidate than those who don't so you want to make sure that when you are doing these things that you're recording results so if you're working with social media specifically that you've got statistics that you can talk about so obviously if you start on your local pub social media and they've got 10 followers and you grow it to 3,000 followers make sure that you've got something in place where you can see that kind of rapid growth because when you then go to employers and they say what social media experience have you got you can say to them well I did this for a, a local pub like last year we grew their following and you've got like a physical evidence of what you've done a lot of people have done these things especially kind of created their own opportunity but they've not documented it so then when they go to show show employers 
they can't because they don't remember what they've done. And I especially did this when I first started kind of getting some experience and freelancing. I didn't record any kind of results, which then ultimately meant I was kind of left in not having a portfolio. But then I decided that I was going to start recording things, which is a lot better. Um, and then another thing you want to do is concentrate on the hard skills that you've learned on your CV. So I see so many CVs literally on a daily basis that don't have this. You want to include softwares that you can use. So the hard kind of more technical skills on your CV. It's all well and good saying leadership or, you know, goal setter or time manager. But at the end of the day, what makes you stand out to an employer? It's the hard skills. So if you've used social media scheduling tools like Later, like Buffer, like Poloni, anything, just literally anything that works for you, anything that you've used, add that to your CV. Now, if you've used MailChimp, WordPress, so many other things, you can add this to your CV because employers will really respect the fact that you know how to use these kind of more technical softwares. So if you do have a blog, you know how to wear and you have it on WordPress, you know how to use WordPress, which is a content management system. And a lot of jobs ask for people to know how to use WordPress, but they don't say WordPress, they say CMS, which means content management system, which is ultimately the same thing. Um, there's lots of different CMS, but WordPress is one of them. And MailChimp, again, you can create your own account on MailChimp totally free and just play around with it. We did a workshop not long ago on MailChimp and we actively encouraged people to just create their own MailChimp account for free, register your email address and just have a play about in there. They've got a drag and drop editor. They've got a landing page kind of creator. Just have go in there, have a little play about, understand how it works and you, you know, you can't necessarily say you're proficient or you're really great at um, MailChimp, but it also means that when you go to an employer and they say, what experience do you have? You can say, well, you know, I've created my own MailChimp account. I've created these campaigns and you've got physical evidence that you can show them rather than just kind of saying, I don't really know what I'm doing because that's the reality of many things, especially when you leave university. It's great to have the theory behind things and know the models and know how things work. But when it comes to the reality of the working world, you need to understand how all these things work. And that will ultimately put you above others when you are going for jobs in later life. So the last thing really is just how can you be more confident in your abilities when it comes to marketing? I totally understand that this is a big thing. I, I, I think everyone actively kind of, you know, comes to the point in their life where they're like, I don't really know what I'm doing. Like, I think it is an active kind of thought that we all have. Everyone suffers from imposter syndrome. Everyone suffers from just kind of thinking that they're not really good enough for what they're doing. And that's totally normal. And you've got to start kind of feeling more confident. So yeah, stop comparing yourself to other people's marketing journeys. Everyone's on their own path. You know, you're not always going to achieve the things that other people achieve on the same timeline. It's just, just not possible. Don't focus on the end goal. Remember that your professional career isn't a race and it's not even a marathon. So, so many people say, oh, you know, it's, it's a marathon, like life's a marathon and, you know, that sort of thing. No, it's not. There is no end goal. You are never going to feel completely like this is it i've made it because there's always going to be somewhere better that you can go whether that's a promotion whether that's going self-employed whether that's starting your own business there's always something else that you can do to make yourself feel even kind of better really about what you're doing there is no set kind of race to life your professional career and your personal life as well you need to remember that you know you're setting these kind of mid goals but there's nothing really i understand there can be a goal that you want in mind but when you get there what's next like there always needs to be this kind of upwards hill of you just kind of bettering yourself all the time work hard even if the odds are against you i've there's been many times when i've worked with clients that you know haven't been the easiest to work with and that's just the reality of working freelance that's just the reality of working in marketing show that you're enthusiastic and you're passionate about marketing 
that will make you feel more confident in yourself. The passion always overrides anything else. I definitely know that that's something that's helped me an awful lot throughout, you know, freelancing, throughout working. Ensure that you're always on top of marketing trends. Like I said before, it's an always ever evolving industry and you're never going to know everything. But trying to keep up with the new algorithms, with the new updates, with trends is a really great way to feel confident that you you know what you're doing and you, you understand things. It is difficult to do this, so don't feel overwhelmed if you, you know, you, you start searching marketing trends and 50 million things come up on Google and you don't really know where to start because that's totally normal. But if you keep up with just kind of the latest trends, you understand what's going on, you will ultimately feel a lot more confident. And then the last one is to connect with more marketers through networking and online as well. Especially at the moment, everyone's kind of will be from tonight at home, locked down, just kind of chilling, waiting for things to blow over. I mean, here we are, but hopefully, you know, things will go. And at the same time, you need to think about online spaces. There are a lot of things out there for you to be getting up to and for you to be networking with people. Don't allow the kind of current situation to think that all of your networking dreams are over because they're definitely not. I think I've done more networking since COVID happened than I ever did previously. So definitely put yourself out there and definitely have a go and just chat to people and be nice to people because everyone loves a good chat. I don't know if anyone's got any questions. Um, I feel like I've just talked at you all for quite a while. Um, but yeah, if I, I don't know if you do have any questions, but there you go. Well, we there was a question in the chat. chat. Yeah. Oh, sorry. There's a question in the chat from um, Gemma. She asked, um, what platform did you use to write your blogs? Oh yeah, I can see that now. So sorry. I didn't have any of the messages on. Okay. Um, yeah, so platform that I used was WordPress. So I had a self-hosted WordPress site and um, I set it up on GoZaddy. So I bought a domain, which is about, I think it was about £12 at the time. And then I did self-hosting on WordPress, which costs about £3 a month. Um, or you can do an annual price as well. And then I just integrated that. So I had my own domain, which you don't have to do. There are a lot of other websites to use, but WordPress is good because if you can have if you work the back ends of it, it's it's great for marketing purposes. And also, if you've got just a .com domain, then, you know, you are just going to look a lot more professional. If you've got your kind of name .com or you've got like a certain blog name .com .co.uk, it looks a lot better than having a kind of .wordpress or something like that. But in all honesty, if that's, you know, if you can only afford to do the free version, then that's fine as well. You're still putting your work out there. You're still kind of creating content, which is amazing. But I did specifically use WordPress self-hosted. I have some questions uh, regarding your, bro your blog too. <laughs> so um, what was your main uh, audience? And I mean, what did your fellows think of it when you started writing on your blog? Um, well, I was young, so everyone did kind of make fun of me a little bit. They, they're not now, needless to say, but I have never been bothered about what people have, have thought of me at all. And I think that is one big thing that you've got to kind of grow a thick skin when you work online and when you kind of show people and, you know, not necessarily anything, but just do write about anything. and. I particularly wrote, I started off writing more about like beauty and lifestyle. And then when I kind of realized that I wasn't that bothered about that, I started to write about stuff that I really was bothered about. So as I said, the kind of more feminism topics, opinion related pieces, stuff that was kind of a bit edgy, to be honest with you. I mean, you know, it was, it's always great to have a really strong opinion. And I think people respect that. But one big thing I would say, if you are going to start a blog is to Think about everything that you're putting out online. Do not put anything that could be risky to potential employers in future. I feel like that's something people say all the time, but that is kind of honest because, I mean, kind of taking it back last night, my partner found my old Twitter from like 2015 
and we went through and oh my gosh like some of the stuff on there is just kind of just so random like not necessarily bad I've never said anything bad I don't have any bad opinions as a person but just so random like I just thought that is so bad I just think you just you feel embarrassed (laughs) <laughs> yeah it, I, I was looking through I think one of them was talking about like some boy I fancied or something it was just so <laughs> random so I just think like you need to think about everything that you put online especially when it comes to blogging because I did put a lot of stuff out there that would be classed as kind of controversial especially when it comes to like women's rights and stuff like that not necessarily controversial in the eyes of people who are normal but eyes in the people who or like you can't talk about all stuff like this. I understand that's what happens. Um, but yeah, just be careful because if you are gonna wanna work for a more kind of corporate brand, they very much do look into employees like ridiculous, like a ridiculous amount. It's not gonna be as simple as just like, oh, look at my portfolio. Like they're gonna search your social media. They're gonna be really like deep in on everything that you've done online. So I would definitely suggest starting a blog. Just be careful what you do put out there. I don't actually have any questions, but that was actually a very informative um, little presentation and I'm going to take away a lot from it as I'm sure everyone will. So thank you very much, by the way. Yeah, thank you very much. It was amazing. Thank you. Yes, thank you. I just want to reiterate how grateful we are for this opportunity and like, in all honesty, excuse my French as well, it's given me the kick up the arse I need. (laughs) And like, I'm honestly just sat here in awe of you and it's like really inspired me to get like my own journey up and running because like I've been slack. (laughs) But yeah, like honestly, thank you so much for giving us your time this afternoon as well. And yeah, I mean, it's never it's honestly never too late to start creating opportunity and at the end of the day you know that is a thing you are the only person that can can do what you do and you you're the only person that's you as well so it's very much about putting yourself out there doing something a little bit different and also not burning yourself out as well i definitely got to the point i would say like third year of university i was just doing so many different things i wouldn't recommend it really um but i love to be busy i'm very much a busy person i say that i don't like it but i actually love it like i'm busy all the time i take on too much stuff but i love it at the same time so i would just say you know if you are gonna do anything just do everything with some time don't rush yourself really learn and take in things definitely reach out to kind of local companies especially at the moment this isn't the best time for local companies and local businesses but you know you having just some marketing knowledge could really help out a local business and as well as you being able to add that to your cv you're also able to help out a business at the same time yeah and also as you said don't compare to others because you have your own path and your own luck and your start your own career mm-hmm. definitely yeah amazing okay well i suppose that's that's everything then if i am um, we're obviously on kind of instagram and everything and um, we're yeah. just girls in marketing on basically everything if you want to follow my instagram i have like a professional business yeah. inspiring one um, it's just Olivia May Hanlon, M A E Hanlon, H A N L O N, on Instagram. I've started putting a lot more content on there recently. Um, I've never really done it before, but I used to have like obviously a blog account and lots of other things. But I recently decided I wanted to start just like being cool again because I used to do loads of stuff and I kind of focused on girls and marketing a lot more. So I'm also building my personal brand back since. I started Girls of Marketing. I had one when I was kind of freelancing, but I kind of deleted it, if you will, when I started working full time. And now I'm built it back up again. So yeah, amazing. Well, thank you for having me. If you, if anyone wants to give me a message or an email, my emails are olivia at girlsofmarketing.com. And yeah, I mean, I'm happy to have a chat with anyone. If anyone wants to have like a one-to-one talk, I'm happy with that as well. Just up for everything really, just whatever you want, within reason, obviously. <laughs>